Defense Commanders, welcome to Crash Landing Episode 22, recorded on the 22nd of December 2013. I'm Commander Crash, and tonight I am joined by Commander Alien. Hello! Alien is here to ans help me answer your questions whilst I play. In this episode we're going to carry on showing you the Elite Dangerous Alpha 1.1 with Oculus Rift support. As always, uh, viewer comments and suggestions are welcome in the chat. Uh, anything you enter in we'll try to answer as quickly as I can to the best of our knowledge. So with that, uh, on with the show! So we thought we'd... Uh, we try and arrange this t tonight to make things a little easier for me because uh, definitely with the rift on it makes things very very difficult to uh, answer questions and everything so uh, aliens are helping me out just to clear it up for people I don't have the stream audio in my ear I have Karash on a Skype call in my ear and Karash is putting that through into the stream. Yeah, so hopefully that's coming through for everyone uh, correctly on the audio there. It's the first time we've tried it, so special bonus stream, guess for you, for you uh, fans that are up late or up early in Stigrin's case. <laughs> Future boy. <laughs> Absolutely. So hopefully the uh, the sound of the game audio doesn't uh, overpower our voices. That's the main thing we wanted to try and test out tonight. Make sure we've got that working correctly. Something I've been meaning to do for a while is to uh, is to get Alien on as a as a co-pilot or co-commander. <laughs> it's just uh, difficult to get that audio set up correctly. And, uh, so if anyone in the comments wants to uh, shout out anything, if the uh, audio is not quite right for them, if they're having any issues uh, seeing anything, uh, just let me know. And uh, Alien will shout at me and tell me I'm an idiot and I forgot to switch the streams over. <laughs> Don't cross the streams. So at the moment I'm just trying to warm myself up on this mission again, because as Alien knows I was... Uh, I was out drinking Jameson whiskey earlier on. <laughs> there we go. Ah, I still remember how to fly this thing. That's okay. Honestly, officer, that asteroid came out of nowhere. be an interesting one to have down. Drunk in charge of a sidewinder. So th hopefully this will be one thing they will uh, eventually sort out with the rift is one way that I could actually keep an eye on what, what's going on without uh, having to keep taking the rift off, which obviously is a right pain in the backside. Let's drop the shadow quality down. So I think that was one of the things I mentioned. Uh, oh, and it's done it again. Here we go. <laughs> so this is the usual problem I get. Uh, what's happened now is the uh, changing the graphic setting completely messes up the rift. There we go. And we have a question from Stigron. Oh, go ahead. Have you noticed a difference in the AI with the 1.1 update? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, it's very, very subtle, but there are a couple of things that uh, I've noticed the AI do, particularly the... Uh, I think it's the Anaconda on the uh, final mission, the Supply Strike mission. It um, does seem to veer about a lot more to uh, avoid your hits and uh, some of the fighter AI definitely seems to uh, do the same sort of thing. I think that might have been in uh, response to some of the feedback we've given about the old uh, reverse whiz tactic that a lot of people were trying putting yourself into full throttle reverse and uh, just popping shots off until you take them out. So yeah, there definitely seems to be a few tweaks of the AI. Again, what's happened here? 
There we go. So this definitely makes things better. Hopefully the sound's coming across okay for everyone. Certainly makes things easier. Thank you for trying this actually, Alien. This is uh, a great help with this. No problem. And it doesn't have to just be me joining you like this. It oh. could be anyone on Skype joining you. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, um, that's definitely worth a shot. Now that we've, uh, we've tested the water, so to speak, and we've proven that it can be done, then uh, yeah, definitely, if there is anyone who uh, fancies guest starring on Crash Landing, then welcome to, by all means. should be uh, a good laugh, as it is a community show at the end of the day. be uh, fun to have someone shouting random things at me. <laughs> Oh, if you want random things, I'd get Psycho Cow on. <laughs> well, as long as it's uh, as long as it's PG, and I don't have to change the rating on the street. <laughs> 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 that is one thing I did look at. Actually, uh, technically, I am supposed to uh, change that on the stream settings if uh, there are any uh, colourful language added. I need to change my controller inputs, I think. Yeah, I changed them the other day and I had to put them back. So I was quite happy with the controller layout that uh, Mike Evans worked through on this. Um, the only downside is I couldn't find some of the buttons he'd mapped to things. The, uh, the boost was mapped to button 32 and I cannot for the life of me find button 32 on this controller. It is ridiculously complicated this thing. So many options. Right, we have another question from oh. Commander Jan. Ooh. Can you add frames per second into the stream so we can see what frames per second you're getting? Oh, um, that's a good point, actually. Um, I haven't found a keyboard shortcut in the Elite Dangerous uh, game itself which would allow me to do that. Um, but I, I, I might be able to do it with something like Fraps or similar, so uh, I'll try and get that sorted out for you. Um, I might have to do that on the next stream, though, because otherwise I have to take the stream down just to do that. But, uh, yeah, definitely uh, is something I, I will look at. Um, I just need to find... <laughs> I cannot for the life of me find it. Flight assist, there it is. Definitely. Excellent. Right, that's sorted. Yes, yeah, so I'll, um, I'll try and get uh, a frame per second counter in for the, uh, in for the next... Uh, the next stream definitely no problem I've seen some videos of the alpha where they've got the frames per second in the top left corner just under where yours says uh, I can't read the text it's too small but you know where I'm, look I'm yeah. looking I'm right yeah. in the top left corner oh, okay. and they've got like a frames per second counter and it's not fraps because fraps is like a big green number well, maybe I'm missing it's something same, obvious. It's the same font as the text you've currently got in the top left. Must be something integrated then. What if... Um, hmm, I'll have to find out if there is a keyboard shortcut that I'm missing. Uh, it'll be definitely worth a shot. I mean, I'd be interested to see what my, my frame rate is myself, actually, because I haven't been able to... Uh, well, I, be able to, I haven't had time to actually look into uh, testing the uh, frames per second I'm getting. I mean, it's definitely smooth. It's It must be over 60 frames per second, because it's smooth enough on the rift not to cause me any ice, uh, not ice strain, nausea problems, so, uh, well, yeah, definitely. Greg, Greg and Peter Esker just saying now, uh, it doesn't work in 1.1. 1 .1. It oh. used to be control F in 1.0, oh, but right. when they updated to 1.1, 1 .1, they took it out for some reason. Oh, okay. That is odd, because I did try control F, uh, I think it was last night, actually, because I had, uh, someone else mention it on there, I think, so, i will explain why it didn't work for me, then. That's a shame. Yes. If there's another shortcut, maybe, or whether it's just been overridden or hidden entirely. Whoa. 
quick way to make yourself feel sick. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, the problem is, I suppose we should probably explain that as well, actually. Uh, one of the things we realise it would cause a problem is uh, aliens listening rabbit on about things. But uh, you're not going to see the video footage until 30 seconds after I've done things, so... It's going to be this odd temporal disparity between what we're saying. <laughs> Being able to look around makes a world of difference in how you how you play the game. But let's just admit that makes dog fighting a lot more involving. My, my dear. Stacking those <laughs> missiles. Greg says, "Alien backseat driver." <laughs> <laughs> and Stigron says, uh, at Karash, do you get tired of the same mission? Um, no, not really, actually, because it's, uh, you know, the outcome and uh, what you do in each mission is so varied each time that um, it's it's a joy just to have another go at it, just to see if it uh, it changes next time. Of course, when we, uh, we do have the full thing, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. I can't wait for that. Another problem with the rift at the moment. Lost the button there. There we go. There we go. So I found the button for uh, resetting the uh, the rift uh, position. That's one of the common problems you have with the is with the rift is it it tends to drift around a little bit. So you end up looking to your side or something like that instead of looking straight forward. It's a bit of a pain in the backside, but there is actually a built-in button in the engine I found there, which resets it back to the centre, which is very handy. See, they think of everything. Okay, one from Petrus. Oh, okay. Uh, I, saw, I saw Tin Man screenshots, and also Nate Hound today played with, around with the Frost. Oh. That looks amazing, how it breaks light from the outside of the cockpit. So the ah, question yes. is this, have you done some sightseeing with the Oculus Rift? <laughs> Uh, y yes, yes and no, not purposely done any sightseeing, but I do tend to uh, get carried away and instead of actually doing these missions I quite happily sit there and just uh, stare at things like I'm doing now, you know, I'm just kind of rabbiting on and staring at things. There's, uh, even in this limited little uh, sandbox we have at the moment, it's, uh, it's uh, some amazing scenes to stare at, like the, uh, like the nebula over there, which is, uh, which is quite pretty to, to behold. Yes, I uh, I was considering actually if there was a way that I could play around with the game files to remove the cockpit because I know a lot of people have been asking about you know removing the cockpit view so that you can uh, have a nice clear screenshot. Um, it, currently, it's not possible, but uh, I suppose it, uh, you know, a little tweaking in the game files, I might be able to do it. I have been looking at the uh, the structure of the data files inside the folders. I, I know that's probably naughty, but I I do like to know how these things tick. Is that the Cobra over there? That is the question. No, the Cobra is above me somewhere. There it is. I can see you. Yeah, I can't exactly help you because I'm seeing 30 seconds after you've <laughs> said it. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's just like uh, back in the day on the uh, Frontier Elite 2 uh, <laughs> streams, wasn't it? <laughs> there, crew member, crew member, crew... Oh, dear. Yeah. Crew, 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 there, there, there. Oh, never too mind. late, too late. Already <laughs> gone, already gone. Yeah, it is the the delay is a right pain in the backside to get used to, but uh, that makes things more interesting. The problem was I was zipping around uh, in Frontier way too quickly. I should have been taking my time, but I was in, in such a rush to get uh, up to that elite ranking. I did, I did it in plenty of time to spare. That's it. I managed to beat them out the door. Yeah. <laughs> 
just pasted a link to you in Skype. Oh, okay, that's thank you. The, the put in the chat by Greg. Apparently, you're famous. <laughs> oh there's, dear. There's a site. There's a site called Co uh, Copy Left. Oh that right. Is featuring uh, Crash Landing Number Twenty Part Four. Oh my. God. <laughs> Link and everything to your stream. Oh dear, it's such a weird thing. I never intended this to take off in such a way, but it's so cool. Well, I'll link to the site for you in Skype. Thank you, excellent. Ah, oh, yeah, it's like, like, like I've said you know, several times before, I mean, the only reason I really wanted to do this was just to get the word out there about Elite and, uh, you know, it's to get people to have a bit of a, you know, a chance to see it and, uh, well, not just see it, but have a little bit of, of a say-so in uh, what they see as well. So, you know, that was my main thing. I was thinking, you know, I've, I've got a lot of people on the forums that were saying they wish they could get into you know, the alpha and the beta and whatnot, but it's, you know, it's very, very expensive, and I just wanted to be able to give a little bit back. That was all. So, it's just a crazy idea I had one Saturday afternoon. And look what it, look what it is now. <laughs> Planet taunting me. Say, you can't land on me. Not fair. Yeah, the AI definitely seems to react uh, differently to how it did in the 1.0 uh, release. By far, it's uh, these little fighters don't just seem to go howl for level at, at you all the time. Unfortunately, that's the. Uh, the enemy AI, but uh, the uh, wingmen AI seem to be uh, just as daft as they were in the first place. To be fair, they will just keep gunning at things. I mean, maybe that's just a, a thing with this uh, level of wingman I've got here. They're not particularly smart because I haven't paid very much money for them. You know, <laughs> something like that maybe. Feel free to butt in any time there, Alien, because I know I, uh, I've i got used to uh, waffling on to fill the time. <laughs> You're saying about the AI, mm. now what I'm wondering is, is if you go and play Pirate, yeah. and you start getting the bounty on your head, and a bigger bounty, and a bigger bounty, and a bigger bounty, I wonder if it'll get to a point where the bounty's like so big, or maybe on the opposite way, where the bounty's not big enough, that... Um, you'll switch from NPCs coming after you to players coming after you. So, for example, mm -hmm. as the bounty gets bigger, less and less NPCs come after you and more and more players will come after you instead of the NPCs. Mm. Yeah, no, no, that that's sounds very interesting. I mean, I, I do like the idea of this kind of, like, self-maintained uh, bounty system, you know, the community kind of... Uh, dealing with the issues itself, you know, I hope, I hope that does feed through the game. It would be interesting to see exactly that, where the uh, the servers itself kind of, like, spawns in NPCs, but then uh, if you do be a really, really naughty boy, so to speak, uh, you end up with such a bounty on your head that the uh, server starts matching you with uh, bounty hunter types. That would be an interesting balance. Uh, Thing the server can do. I hope that I hope that something like that happens. I'd like to see that anyway. Commander Jan is asking if you're going to have another go at doing all the scenarios in a row tonight without dying. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I mentioned I mentioned you'll have more time tomorrow night. I would definitely have more Commander time. Commander Jan yeah. said he won't be here. Oh well. We'll give it a go. I mean, I've done the, I've done all of the others so far. It's just ah, it's his beam laser. Get out of the way of this beam laser. Um, no, 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 no. no. Ah, so screwed. There we go. Um, if I've managed to survive this. Uh, I doubt he has 1% hull and he's got 80. Uh, I don't think that's looking very good at the moment. But uh, if I didn't completely screw this up, then that would have been all six of the missions in a row without failing. So. Let's see what we can do. 
ain't, please. Ain't Greg, to Greg is going to start a new Kickstarter. Fund to have alien with a permanent bounty on my head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's just mean. <laughs> I think we need a permanent bounty on uh, Psycho Cow's head, though. <laughs> He's just a lawn to himself. I, I keep joking, Mike will have uh, written into the game code some special commands. <laughs> Find Psycho Cow, disable Psycho Cow, transfer cargo from Psycho Cow. <laughs> I don't see why not. I think that's only fair. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, after all the taunting, I think it's only it's only fair. Oh, he's gonna get his shield back up. Oh, he's got his shield back up. Oh dear. Well, I'm on one percent hull. If I pull this off, it'd be uh, it'd be a miracle. But hey, I'll try it. I notice on this uh, scenario, you are a lot closer to the planet, actually. Oh no, 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 no! Too close. His beam laser's got me. If only I can get close enough to fire off the. Uh, missiles, but uh, if I risk that, I think I am screwed. Now, you say you're closer to the planet, but I don't think you are. I think it's the same distance. <laughs> Talking over myself. Uh, I don't know. We'll have to look we'll at the scene in a second. We'll have to look the other way. It feels closer. I know that's an odd thing to say. But, uh, we'll lift on. We do get that sense of scale. That's it. There we go. Screwed that up. Hit the boost button by mistake. So where did that planet go? Yeah, if we get it lined up in the uh, in the cockpit window, and then I can compare it. See, I don't know whether they've actually what they've done is they've used the um, planet uh, generation engine to just generate a single scenario and then kind of set it up in such a way that uh, we're all in the same area. So. They crash into me, stupid sidewinder. There we go. So looking at this, if I get the the horizon there, we're kind of down just below the uh, the weapon mounts either side. So let's boot up the other scenario and we'll see uh, how big it is. Like I said, it is a rather strange thing to say it feels larger, but uh, you do get that sensation of things. Uh, the sense of scale kicks in. Petarisk is saying uh, they did a very rough calculation that the planet is about three days away with maximum speed of the Sidewinder, but several seconds with Super Cruise if we assume 0.2c as maximum speed. Wow, that is... Uh, yeah, I definitely won't be doing that until we get Super Cruise enabled then. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I can't wait for us to have that exploration option, that's going to be so much fun. It definitely looks safe. Uh, let's see where we got to now. Yeah, it, it definitely looks farther away if I get that up and out of the horizon. Just on the top of the cockpit there, and I can see the whole planet in this view. It doesn't extend to the same range, so uh, this asteroid field must be slightly farther away from the planet. And in that supply strike uh, scenario, it's... Um, so obviously we're closer to the planet for that particular scene, so... Uh, hmm, interesting. It definitely seems like they've uh, they've used the generation engine to uh, make this one little system up and then kind of plopped in a few markers at a few key positions. Excellent, excellent stuff. Okay folks, I'm just going to take a two second break. Well, not two seconds, but just a quick break and I'll uh, try and answer questions when I come back. Hang on.
Greetings, Commanders! Sorry for the delay there. Ah, real life getting in the way of Elite is just no good. Right, hopefully I'm coming back across. You know that that telltale sign when I'm playing it with the Rift is uh, whether I'm coming back as the screen starts shaking a bit wildly. There we go. Right, I'm back on the waste disposal. Let's have another quick go at it and see if we can get a little bit further. Zip through all these missions. It's one of the other uh, viewer requests, which I suppose is pertinent right now, is to see how far I can fly through the asteroid field with flight assist off after having a few drinks. And I've certainly done that tonight. <laughs> Is it without rolling and just using the um, side to side the straight? Yeah, I think that's what Croy asked. But uh, <laughs> to be honest, I was just busy chopping away and completely forgot. They said uh, just using the lateral thrusters and just started uh, just started rolling as well. I didn't even realise I'd done that. But, uh, boom! I can definitely try that. Uh, doing it without rolling would probably be easier to be fair because you're only compensating for the velocity vector in uh, in one direction so uh, let's find a particularly dense cluster of asteroids that seems to be concentrated along this belt here so let's pick a pick a direction full thrust I think Commander Croy said so flight assist off and only lateral thrusters. Boost as well for fun. Ooh, and ducking to avoid an asteroid there. <laughs> what, you mean you physically ducked? I physically ducked. It doesn't do anything, but <laughs> I physically ducked. Ooh, I've got a bit of a roll going on, but I think that's just... Uh, I don't that is something I wanted to ask you about the Oculus Rift with the uh, Alpha. If you, like, lean forwards, does the Rift go forwards in the game? No, Or, or no. is it... Stuck on this one set. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of stuck on the point. It's not a limitation of the Alpha, though. It's um, it's literally because the Oculus SDK hasn't enabled that part of the hardware yet. It is actually built in. It's got a, mag a full magnometer, so it can actually calculate laterally where you are to uh, a few millimeters. I think it's actually quite accurate. Um, so once that comes in, that that's going to be a whole another level of, uh, of immersion and uh, it's such a silly thing as well because um, that extra little bit of support if I did lean in so that I could see the scanner closer or something like that it's not just a nice feature it would stop people from uh, getting that nauseous feeling as well because it does make you feel a bit odd like at the moment if I lean forward I'll, I'll do it and do it, I'll, lean, I'll sit right back and then I'll sit right forward and as you can see from the view it barely changes at all there's virtually no difference um, right. so, so for me, it, it is kind of uh, disorientating. It does make you feel a bit kind of sick to your stomach sort of thing. It's that kind of typical motion sickness feeling you get. So once that is enabled, it's going to be excellent. And that's one of the things I was kind of uh, eager to see on some of the uh, videos people have been showing about the Track IR, actually, is the, uh, the Track IR does have support already uh, for leaning in and leaning to the side and whatnot and you're getting the uh, the extra views which is really cool so you can you can lean forward to zoom into the scanner and all so it's definitely there in the engine the engine uh, can support that sort of movement but uh, we're just gonna have to wait until the uh, the oculus sdk gives us access to that piece of hardware and it's annoying for myself as well because uh, uh, as an indie dev I, uh, i've been trying to play around with it but uh, you just can't can't get it yet damn it <laughs> no Commander Voidson has joined us. Oh, greetings, Commander. Welcome to the extra special bonus stream you decided to set up at the last second. It's probably because I've been drinking way too much, you know. I think, why don't we try this? Um, <laughs> but yes, as, as you can probably tell by now, uh, Alien is helping me uh, answer the questions tonight, which is something we, we wanted to try a while back. Uh, but I only just got myself around to... Uh, to doing it and sorting it out with aliens, so I think I think I've left the asteroid field. I think I've done it. There we go. Uh, Excellent. I did oh. it. There you go, Commander Croy. I did do it. 
And I'm half cut. Oh dear, I feel ill now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> definitely, yeah. Uh, definitely an odd sensation. I will have to get the webcam set up as well, because I know a lot of people who stream things do that, and it's uh, it is quite funny to see the reactions of other people on the rift. <laughs> So this is something I'm curious about. Is when I at Elite Meet when I tried on your Rift and it had you had the house demo. Oh yeah. It felt like I was sitting in an electric wheelchair <laughs> moving around. <laughs> and, and the weirdest thing was I've never had motion sickness in my life mm. ever, but I could physically feel myself moving. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And, that's, that's, and that's I'm just wondering how how much that is happening. With the cockpit. Well, surprisingly, because with the house demo, you, we were just like a disembodied thing, weren't we? Yeah, just floating there was, around. There was no yeah. avatar or anything. Mm -hmm. Whereas with the get the the alpha, you've got the cockpit. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm it it is it is weird. It's like when you know, looking down now, it does kind of make me feel like my my feet should be sat in that little uh, that little groove in the floor there, and I should be sat on a stool on this this back section. That's kind of how I feel right now. Um, it's it's a really really odd feeling. So I'm hoping when we do get the full uh, commander chair in there, it's going to uh, feel a lot more immersive. But uh, yeah, with the with the cockpit here, as it's quite um, stationary in respect to me, um, you really don't get that kind of like horrible motion feeling that you get in some of the other games. I mean, the first-person shooters are actually not a particularly good fit for the Rift, but something like this with a cockpit is fantastic because you get that... Oops. Um, <laughs> you get that sensation of, you know, being sat in a cockpit because you are sat in a chair for real. So uh, it's a really good kind of a analogy. You know, the two uh, experiences uh, mesh together very well. But... Um, you know, something like this now, looking at this asteroid, this really does give a, a sense of movement and uh, it's a rather odd feeling. But as the cockpit is stationary, it gives me something closer to me to focus on. So that kind of nauseous feeling uh, is, is nowhere near as apparent as something like a first-person shooter. I mean, it's kind of the same thing for me as well. I mean, you say, obviously, you, uh, you just said uh, you've never really had motion sickness issues. Um, I, I always have, but um, strangely enough, once I started learning to drive, um, as long as I'm driving the car, I don't feel nauseous at all. As soon as I sit in the passenger seat, I just get awful if I try to read anything or do anything <laughs> anything at all. So it's uh, it's really strange how it affects some people differently to others, I must admit. completely lost where we started, but... Uh. <laughs> I can't help you because I'm 30 seconds behind you! <laughs> it's like, no, this way, this way, no, 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 never mind. <laughs> we'll just try a few of the uh, painted crash corner moves. <laughs> See, I, did, I, I left that open to the community to name that anything they wanted, but... Uh, yeah. uh, I'm pushing for Babylon 5 <laughs> That works as well, yeah, that works fine. I've got, to, I've got to stamp my name on something, that's the thing, you know. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to restart this scenario, I am so totally lost. If I can find the escape key, there we go. So I think that's one thing they need to fix is this loading screen. Obviously at the moment it's just a video file rendered in each eye and it... Uh, it's almost like having the video files you know, they're like the like sitting two inches from the screen is like slammed up in front of your face. You know you can't uh, you can't see that video at all because it's too close to focus on. And the same with this. Unfortunately, these um, uh, these little guide uh, screens that come up at the start of each scenario they're uh, they're designed to go full screen, so they work great. Uh, you know, when you're playing without the rift, but uh, as soon as you've got the rift on there, they're unreadable at the moment. But I think that's a fair compromise that they've done that anyway, it, uh, because if you put it into rift, the text would be unreadable, I think. The resolution of the dev kit is too too low to make most text readable, really. 
on that spinning sidewinder you get on the loading screen, I swear that's a door right smack bang in the middle of the back of the sidewinder. Yes, it most definitely is. Um, I think uh, in one, oh crikey, uh, one of the very early, uh, uh, what was it, the newsletters that were going out, um, I think it was mentioned there. Um, I do remember some of these things occasionally. Sometimes I'm quote I quote complete BS, but uh, most of the time I remember these things. And yes, it is uh, it is a door. And interesting enough, if we actually I'll do the side uh, the supply strike mission next. I think pretty sure I spotted there was a door on the side of the anaconda as well, right where the uh, right where the cockpit uh, was. Almost like uh, they could get out of the side of the uh, of the ship when it's landed or something. Uh, and when you when you see that orange sidewinder mm -hmm. spinning round on the loading screen, if you imagine the size of the cockpit mm. in that orange sidewinder, yeah, it looks like the door you can see when you turn your head around mm. with the Oculus on, yeah, isn't lining up with the door on the orange sidewinder. No, there's definitely a, a disparity there. There's I think the size yeah. and shape of it definitely. But, um, I mean. Oh, I just wish I could peek behind that door. Um, <laughs> but there's there's definitely something else on the side of it. I think there's probably a, you know there's got to be a small um, corridor. I think judging by the size and shape of what we've seen in the concept art so far, I think there's a small corridor um, from the the door in the cockpit to the uh, the external door. So I think that's uh, that's where we're seeing the difference. Um, obviously, there's not not a lot to do in a sidewinder really, but. Uh, Oh, is, is that it there? Oh, just on the back. It's hard to see. I have to get under the shields to do it. But, uh, definitely appears to be a door there. I'll try the other side, maybe, as he's tilting away from me that side. And he's directly in sunlight. Oh, oi, 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 balancing act. This is a balancing act. Don't tilt away from me, you stupid. And there he goes into the. Oh, it's got a little red light on it. It's very hard to see, but there's a little red light on that door. I swear there's a door there. Definitely looks like one either side of the bridge, like you can go out uh, behind the bridge and uh, go out a little side hatch. So they, uh, they really have thought of everything with this, haven't they? <laughs> I mean, we know we saw in the, I think it was the early video with the uh, damage model showing up. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a door. I was just, I was just thinking about the uh, Frontiers um, concept art mm. with the cutaway of the anaconda. Yeah, yeah. There's all those uh, corridors and cargo spaces inside internally, so that you know they've thought of all that up front, which is going to be uh, oh, it's going to be brilliant when we, can, when we can walk around it. But uh, I, I do recall reading something. I think it was one of the interviews with the team actually that uh, all of the ships have been designed with proper scale in mind. So. Uh, the reason why we have those doors on there is it really helps to give a sense of, of scale when you get up close to some of these bigger ships. You can see, it's like, oh my god, you know, that's the size of that door on the side of it. Then, uh, you know, <laughs> it puts into perspective how tiny your little sidewinder is, sort of thing. So. Stack up those missiles. Commander Jan has just asked if we can get a screenshot of the airlock on the anaconda. Oh, on the side of it. Damn. Uh, yeah, again, the usual problem with we the 30 We can do that after. Day. When, yeah, when you upload the video, yeah. when you upload the video, we can get a screenshot of it. It's not a problem. Yep, definitely. Yeah, we'll um, find that point in the in the video and uh, grab it for you. We did, uh, I think there was a, a request to do that with the looking in through the cockpit of the Anaconda the other day as well, and that was in one of the previous yes. streams, so. It's definitely there, it's all archived and uh, stored, well it's on both sites actually, it stays on Twitch for uh, I think a couple of months, but uh, I have been uh, uploading everything into YouTube as well, I'm trying my best too without it getting uh, stopped by their ridiculous copyright system. That. Commander Grumpy Pants has joined us. Ah, Have greetings, you seen, Commander. Seen him on the forum. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I've had so many names flash by on this in the last few days. I'm just, I'm struggling to keep track now. I'm not, I'm normally pretty good with things like that, but uh, I do apologise if I, 
if I forget anyone's names, there's so many names. I think on the uh, the first day of Alpha, I think, what was it we peaked at? It was 197 simultaneous viewers, something like that? Uh, the most I saw was 197. Oh it God. might have gone higher than that, and I just didn't see it. Oh, my dear. I just, I, I can't even imagine that. I never, I never thought uh, just having a little bit of a laugh would uh, snowball into something insane like this, but... Uh, Ah, it's so much fun though, it's great just to uh, get involved, like I said. Let's see if I can... Go on, go on. No. Yes! Took out the missile. You'll, you'll see that in a second, but... <laughs> yeah, I'll see it in a minute. No, no, no! Oh, I missed it's that one. Targeted. Damn. And it takes me a few seconds to get it, but I did get it. Shooting and it's not easy with the target gone. Yay! Not easy <laughs> with the old uh, bullets on these things, the old Gatling cannons or whatever they're called. I hope they make missiles harder to mm. shoot down. Because in in the first elite and in FE2 and FFE, if you had a missile fired at you, they were near impossible to actually shoot down. Yeah. Before they got to you, the easiest thing to do was actually to run away. Yes, yes, absolutely, and that's one of the tactics I think I was showing in some of the earlier streams was just uh, leg it, get it in your uh, your rear view, and uh, just throttle back and just hope for the best. That did tend to be the only way you could do it, because uh, they were so quick, they caught up with you so quick, the acceleration of them was so high that uh, you didn't stand any chance of outrunning them. Just had to go and go and go until they were a couple of hundred meters away from you, and then uh, just pull a 90 degree turn. And just hope for the best, really. That was the only way to get away. Yeah, it would be interesting to see a lot of different missile types and uh, harder missiles and whatnot. See, I want to get closer to this Cobra because uh, I think there's a door on the back of the Cobra as well. be your favourite weapon you've seen so far in the Alpha than Alien? Uh, I'm not sure the official name for it, but the, the beam laser. Oh, right, okay. I assume it is just going to be called beam laser. I mean, that's that's what it shows up in the UI. Seems uh, sensible. You know, it's what we all recognise it as. Damn, I destroyed it. I mean, <laughs> the rail gun for me is too much like sneezing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's what it is, it's like... Virtue. It's just like a big blue Virtue. flash, doom dead. <laughs> and, and the Gatling gun is just too old school. <laughs> it's it's super effective. It is a little wimpy, I must admit, but uh, it does uh, it does hit the mark. Yeah, just trying to look at that. Uh, there does seem to be a bit of a gap there between the, the cockpit and that back door. It definitely seems to be a corridor or something in between there. So uh, yeah. time will tell, I suppose. It's not going to be a very big corridor. No, no, it literally is just a uh, a short space between uh, between the back of here and that. Just just enough for a little engineering panel or something, I think. <laughs> Still want to know what that package there is. Big block of marzipan. Yeah, definitely. That's my that's my for my Christmas cake. I need to get it to lave in time for the launch. <laughs> Not many questions coming through on the chat. Everyone's asking each other things. <laughs> I think that was the problem though, when I was uh, streaming. For, oh my god, that missile just shot straight past me. Oh, I should be looking at the cobra. Whoa, whoa. Oh dear. Yeah, they do seem to have a short uh, lifespan. I think that's half the reason why they're so easy in this version, is they have a very, very short burn and then they are uh, done and dusted. But yeah, um, <laughs> That was uh, one of the things I was uh, trying to peek through and spot the chat for uh, a while and then uh, you to find people who are just happily talking amongst themselves. Not that that's a bad thing, but uh, obviously uh, I, can't, I can't get involved like I normally would. I do like to try and chat if I can, but uh, it's hard to uh, stay involved and uh, play the game at the same time. 
I think it's it's a mad thing. I can't concentrate on two things at the same time. I outright admit that is actually a scientific fact, I think. Come on, come on. Yeah, you might have a pulse laser, but I'm more tenacious. Excuse me. Oh, it's so close. So close to that door. Damn. If there's a couple of cobras in the uh, incursion mission, I could sneak up on and... Uh, have a look at their doors, that might be more successful that way. I mean, going back to Stigwin's question right early on, actually, it's like, uh, you know, do I get bored of playing the same old missions? It's like, well, I want to show you that thing in the incursion mission I just said, but I just want to finish this mission as well, so just, 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 just bear with me, just, 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 one, just one more go. <laughs> so, yeah, it is, <laughs> it is addictive. There's going to be so much more varied. See, hey, he's going through like a corkscrew technique there. I, I don't recall him doing that early on in the uh, in the one one oh alpha they didn't seem to have that sort of behaviour. So they definitely followed some some tweaks to the AI behaviour. I've lost shields. I've lost shields. Whoa, that was close. Oh, his shields are back up. Damn you. Damn you. Where is he? 16% hull. I got a bit more hull. It's a much smaller hull, but I got a bit more. So I was quite concerned, um, you know, when the... Oh, I've got a shield malfunction. When the uh, topic came up in the forum about uh, how the weapons were going to work and how this kind of like taking shields down and everything else like that, I was a little bit concerned about some of the things I was reading about, uh, you know, s some of the weapons would be more effective at penetrating shields and whatnot. It, it didn't seem right to me, but I must admit, after playing this for a while, it works really well, this whole kind of idea that... Uh, certain weapons are better at taking the shields down than others, and you have to get those shields down before your uh, weapons are really effective at doing damage. It, it really does seem to work quite well, and it, you know, for both sides of, uh, you know, the attacker and the, uh, the target, you get this nice kind of balance of it. Uh, oh, 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 yep, hull breach, there we go, he's gone. Out of the park. Oh, actually, that's a good point, because I've, uh, destroyed the Cobra when I should have been destroying the other targets. I might uh, sneak up on the wreckage and have a look at the uh, the door. Oh, i got a shield malfunction. Put some more power into shields. Come on. No, unfortunately I don't think there's much left of this Cobra. Damn it. <laughs> oh, bang. Yeah, not a great deal left. Okay, let's fire up the other mission. Maybe we're going to get a better look at it there. Uh, where are we? Factions. See if we can find ourselves a cover and sneak up on it. Okie dokie. Um, Greg has a question for you. Yeah. Uh, can you explain what you had to do to get the Oculus Rift working and the connections that had to be connected, etc.? Oh yeah, no problem at all. Um, it's actually very, very simple. Um, it's one of the simplest things I've had to set up. There's there's a little control box, and it's uh, yeah, it's roughly about uh, I'm going to say about a quarter inch thick and two inches uh, square, um, and it's basically got a five volt power adapter into it, a small micro USB plug, and a HDMI or DVI. Um, so you obviously you only need one display cable. So there's basically three cables to it. Um, that those plug into the back of your computer and uh, then the USB, you can plug it in the front like I have, which is just easier for me. The USB feeds back the head movement uh, information and obviously the, the video comes in uh, through the DVI or HDMI. Um, now the power adapter is is kind of trivial, it's just uh, literally just to give power to the screen really, um, in the Oculus that is, so it's uh, some people I have actually done some hacks you can get around with the USB. But uh, then from that little control box you've just got the one cable going up to the head unit for you so it makes it uh, things a bit tidier. As tidy as they can be anyway. Right. 
I've lost that cobra now. Okay, Crash, here's a here's a, what, a question for you from me. Okay. Um, cool. Can you guess which forum member has just joined us on the chat? I will give you a clue. Woof woof. That's my <gasps> other dog impression. Oh, has he? Oh, it's great yes. to see him. Oh, it's been a long time. No see. <laughs> <laughs> that's excellent. Oh, it's great to have you on the uh, on the stream. Uh, I, mean, I can't believe see, yes, that's how popular we are. That we have we have uh, Kickstarter celebrities joining now. That's it. <laughs> I I haven't seen much of John T since the Kickstarter end, uh, no, ended. No, no, that is true. Actually, he kind of just disappeared. It was quiet, but um, he did actually leave a comment on one of my YouTube videos the other day. So he's obviously aware of the uh, the streams now. I'm not sure if he's actually watched a couple uh, quietly because I think you have to you have to log on in order to be able to chat but I think that's the only limitation really uh, yeah it's uh, oh dear and I was quite surprised on uh, the first stream of the alpha to have uh, Mike Evans join in I was uh, I kind of I was in uh, shock and disbelief to, to begin with and uh yeah, I think uh, a lot of us were. Yeah, so I mean, uh, naturally my reaction was, I thought, well, I'm going to PM him on the forums, because I was like, yeah, I don't see him doing that. That just seems a little bit too good to be true. But no, it was genuinely him. And I think yep. one, of the, uh, one of the art guys uh, joined as well, which was uh, really humbling to see these guys come and check out what I was doing. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, it's handy for them because they're seeing a, an actual customer playing the alpha and it's easier for them to sit and watch someone else doing things that that person might pick up and try things that they Did may do. not think of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's one of the things like... Um that the cornering technique I was playing around with earlier on, I think um, at the time when Mike first saw me do it, he, he said, he, I think he just said, hmm, I see an advanced combat tactic coming on there. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, I think, I suppose it's a, it's a really good thing for them to see it as genuine people trying it and not uh, trying to gussy it up or, uh, you know, do things uh, just because that's the way they're expected it to be done. So. I mean, that's a, a good thing with Twitch and having the chat is that everyone can suggest literally all sorts of things that Frontier probably wouldn't think of. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's uh, it's good to have that kind of instant feedback and uh, let people play around. It's, uh, I mean, particularly for in the in terms of software development, it is a really really handy thing to get early feedback early on for any kind of product. But definitely in terms of games, you know, such a, a large audience as well. So yeah, it's. Uh, Dear, close, but we might have to freeze frame that. <laughs> Oddball asks, have you come across any camels in the vastness <laughs> of outer space? <laughs> Not yet, but I'm hoping uh, Frontier Developments hire you to draw one in. <laughs> it would be great to see one on a poster somewhere, that'd be brilliant. <laughs> nice little throwback to the Kickstarter. <laughs> For anyone who's not familiar with what, <laughs> why the camel is significant, Oddball actually drew a camel on a piece of paper and sold it on eBay. <laughs> Made a small fortune as well. <laughs> yeah, if, uh, yeah, if nothing else, is, I mean, is that one in that nebula over there? Can you see the shape there? Or am I just seeing things? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Another 20 seconds or so. <laughs> yeah, I have. I've tried to play around with a few things, but there's there's nothing I can do to reduce the stream. I mean, it literally is the the time it takes for it to go up to the Twitch server and be broadcast back out. So there's a there's a delay on it. I suppose that's another another reason why peer to peer battle is going to be so uh, so. Oh no, he's gone. He's blown up. Uh, such a good thing, really, is it? it's going to be a lot less delay with peer-to-peer -peer combat, so... Uh, let's get it, let's get involved. What have I got? Small missiles. And a pulse laser. 
can't hit for Toffee, come on. Greg is saying they need to reduce the weapons range mm -hmm. so we can see the damage. No point having great effects as you destroy a large ship if you cannot get to see it. <laughs> yeah, that is very true. I mean, uh, most of the weapons at the moment, I think they've got, uh, they seem to have a, a peak of about three kilometer range, which is very, very large. Um, I, I don't know how that's going to work in terms of balance, because I mean, that was one thing I found with the um, the Anaconda supply strike mission was um, unless you stayed out of their uh, weapon range and just picked it off from a distance, you were basically screwed. There was nothing you could do. So, success. There we go. Um, so, yeah, so I think it's going to take a lot of balance to get that right and find a um, uh, weapon ranges for all of the various types which work well. I mean, I don't know whether it would be better to have um, larger ranges on larger ships or not. It seems like that I was thinking that myself. Mm. I was thinking, well, logically, your larger ship will have more power units, mm, so it could fire its weapons further than a small ship like a Sidewinder or, or a Condor. Mm. So that would then force, if, 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 the, if, say, the Anaconda could fire five kilometres, or well, let's say three kilometres, yeah. because the you can't see anything at three kilometers and your sidewinder can only fire at one kilometer your sidewinder then has to get right in to the anaconda to do any damage which gives the anaconda the advantage being the bigger ship yeah definitely otherwise there'd be no incentive to trade and make money and buy the bigger ships mm. yeah, everyone would just fly around in a, in a sidewinder mm. yeah definitely and i think that's i mean Realistically, the chances of being able to take out an anaconda with a sidewinder should be crazy high. Um, it, it it wouldn't have been something I would have thought of as possible, so I was quite surprised to see it as a combat scenario in the alpha. I think they just they just wanted to let us have a taste of what it might be like, um, but I think it's going to be one of those things. It would be virtually impossible. At least you'd hope it would be. I mean, for such a big ship to be taken out by a single dude in a tiny little ship like this, yeah. it just seems a bit crazy, really. Uh. It would encourage uh, team play as well, because you'd have a, a team of you in Sidewinders mm -hmm. to take out the Anaconda. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think that's um, something which is going to become more apparent with the, um, the multiplayer and the better AI, because I think with the Supply Strike mission, I think that half of the problem is, is the, the wingmen are very basic AI and they tend to as soon as you've targeted and started shooting things they just keep keep hitting stuff until they uh, they blow up but uh, I think with better AI and multiplayer um, I think that mission could be made harder and uh, definitely uh, more challenging for groups of players instead of just a single player. I, I think it's something that should be virtually impossible for a single player to do so Yeah But yeah and it's 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 just a question of balance, like I said at the start. It is, uh, you know, how do you keep it interesting, encourage people to want to try and do things like that, but also make it realistic in a way. You know what I mean? Yeah. One percent hull. Greg has just uh, commented, but it also needs to be balanced for the people who play offline single player. So if you're playing offline single player and you're in a sidewinder, you're not going to have five, uh, five, ten friends to yeah. team up with. Yeah, and that's why I'm hoping the, um, like I said, it, it doesn't look like at the moment they've actually done any uh, modifications to the, the friendly AI. Um, the co the uh, aggressive AI has been tweaked slightly, but at the moment the friendly AI is pretty basic and it doesn't really uh, do a lot to help you. So yeah, if you were playing offline, I would hope that the uh, the uh, friendly NPCs were a bit more capable. I think there was one thing actually that um, just before I started streaming, uh, Stigrin uh, sent me a link of uh, something from Star Citizen. Actually, it was showing the uh, the uh, game has been tweaked a lot more to allow you to have much more your control than what we've seen in the alpha. 
uh, makes it more like a first person shooter and I think a lot of that probably is due to the fact that while well, the engine itself is actually tweaked and tuned for a first person shooter because it's basically the crisis engine so um, I mean I don't know whether I like that or not I, I've kind of I was a little bit shocked to begin with when I started playing the Alpha because it this doesn't play like Frontier Elite 2 at all because the yaw has been uh, so limited as part of um, what Mike said actually that was part of his uh, design goal to encourage you to get into roll maneuvers and things like that much more like the original Elite. Um, to begin with I was quite surprised uh, but actually uh, now that I've been playing it a bit more I've got used to it. It definitely is something which is kind of tweaked and perfected for use on a stick or using the the controller like the Xbox controller but I found on the keyboard and mouse um, it just doesn't work quite as well because uh, you tend to want to move the mouse left and right like you would in a first person shooter and by default that rolls you left and right which just seems very odd on a mouse it doesn't work uh, I tried to set it up so the uh, left and right on the mouse yawed like it would in a, a traditional first person shooter but it just uh, it was just too unresponsive unres to be of any use, really. Oddball asks, has anyone found an asteroid yet that you can fly through, i.e. with a hole in it? <laughs> um, not yet. There's there's a few with um, quite large craters on that you can uh, park the uh, ship in if you're careful enough. Unlike me, I normally end up crashing into it. But... Um, yeah, there, there, there's a couple of interesting shapes. And Mike Evans did admit that um, just before they released the Alpha, they decided that they weren't happy with the uh, the algorithm that generated the asteroid shapes, so they uh, disabled it and got the art team t to hand crank these asteroids that you can see here, um, which, is, which is a shame. But they, they are randomly positioned and rotating uh, based on an algorithm. But uh, they're unfortunately, they're all hand cramps, so no, no unusual shapes as of yet. Um, so hopefully, I mean, if they are working on that algorithm and they're going to be tweaking it, then maybe, maybe we'll get more of a hole. This is the closest thing to a hole that I found so far. Is this there we go. Just reverse back into this. Whoa! You shooting at me now? No sensation of up or down with this. Really odd. Don't want to scrape my uh, front of my. There we go. We've got the headlights as well. In case anyone's on the stream that hasn't seen the headlights, the ships do come with little tiny headlights. Not much use for most things, but they're, they're not very good range on them. But I assume that's kind of encouraging to do that kind of. I think it was the scavenger hunt video very early on where they showed you uh, kind of digging around the carcass of a larger ship. I think it encourages you to get close and have a look around. I mean, if you were this close to something, you know, nosing at uh, something, you wouldn't see anyone sneaking up behind you to ambush you, so that's going to lead to some interesting gameplay there. But enough waffle, let's find that ship. Stigron says, uh, at Karash, if you are a flight assist off person, as I am, you really need it tweaked and fixed. Yeah, definitely. If yeah, if you're referring to the yaw there, I, I absolutely agree with you. Um, I, I tried to play it like I was playing Frontier Elite 2, and uh, I found with, with the yaw as it's set at the moment, it was very, very difficult and nearly impossible to get right. Um, so definitely, it, um, in order to play it properly with flight assist, I think it's, it's going to need a lot of tweaking and adjusting to do that. I mean, I'd, I would hope that there'd be some sort of balance they could do that um, if you uh, wanted to play keyboard and mouse, for example, that the, the yaw was amplified somewhat. Um, but if you're playing it on a controller or uh, just on the keys, maybe that could be... Uh, Reduced a little bit again because you, you don't you don't tend to want to use the U all that much with the uh, joystick. It doesn't it's not as useful as other uh, maneuvers. But um, definitely with the keyboard and mouse and and, and like you said, uh, flight assist off that U is going to need to be amplified somewhat for it to be any use in that situation. Talking about keyboard control, something I've yet to find with any game 
any flight sim game and this includes Elite, Frontier Elite 2, Frontier First Encounters, all the X Eagle Soft X series, all of them. When you use the keyboard control, the the increments are too big. Yes, yes, absolutely. It, I, I know exactly what I mean. It, it's I mean from a developer point of view as well, it, it's it's really difficult thing to balance. Um, because you basically have to simulate the idea of acceleration and the only thing you can do that with is by faking it with time so you uh, record the amount of time that the key is pressed and uh, basically uh, kind of gradually accelerate uh, the amount of movement uh, that, you're, that you're applying to that particular control so in the example of like a, like a racing game for example is one I've most familiar with, I've coded one myself um, instead of having the when you tap the left key, it automatically puts you into a full left l left lock. You uh, kind of record that the left key is held down for so many frames, and uh, over each successive frame, you uh, accelerate the amount of lock you put onto the control for a, for a left turn. Um, so you definitely, with any sort of keyboard control, you have, you have that kind of fine tuning balance you have to find where uh, you you kind of almost like you're simulating uh, how the arms of a, of a player would react with an analog control with a digital input. It's, it's a very difficult thing to get right. Commander Jan asks, has anyone, I he's talking about in the alpha, mm -hmm. tried only the keyboard, playing playing with only the keyboard and not even playing with a mouse, just the keyboard? Just the keyboard mode. Um, I don't know. That's certainly something I can try out, actually. If I... I'll finish off this scenario. I might have to switch it back to normal full screen mode because if I can't see the keyboard with the Oculus on, it's gonna be uh, gonna be more fun. Um, so yeah, definitely I'll uh, I'll finish this scenario and I'll give that a go actually because I don't think I've tried that myself. I might have to check all the keys as well. I think by default it's set up with something like uh, a combination of WASD and, and another control. It's kind of a, a mix of keyboard inputs. One more ship. Someone was mentioning on the forum about either having a print off or um, an app, say on your smartphone or something, yeah. for the keyboard layout. <laughs> and yeah. I, men I mentioned, well, in the days of Elite, when we all used the same set of keys, yeah. you could do that. Yeah, yeah. Because you could, you could, with every, every box copy, you could run off the same keyboard overlay. Yeah. Whereas now, where we can rebind keys to what we want them to be, yeah. and adding in joysticks as well, it just doesn't make sense to do a, a keyboard overlay anymore, yeah. because people will just do their own set of keys. Yeah, yeah, that is, that is the trouble. It's so tweakable and tunable. Is how, how do you do that? I mean, you can put the initial one in the box, yeah, it'd be, it'd be fun to have, but it's kind of instantly out of date. I mean, even with this, uh, with the X52, it's, you know, out of the box, so to speak, uh, it's it's very well set up. Works very well. Not much I I've changed on it. The only thing I've done is move the boost button and the flight assist button, so I can get to them easier. Um, but then that, yeah, that's exactly the point. There really is that uh, you've kind of that that cardboard list would effectively be useless at that point. Okie dokie. Let's try. Uh, I'm going to take the rift off for a second, and uh, we will try keyboard only. That is very odd. Oh dear. Breath of fresh air once you take it off. <laughs> 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 it does get rather claustrophobic after a, a while. It's uh, it's great fun to have on, but uh, now you... Uh, oh, I have completely lost my window now. So that's something I'd never thought of mm. with the Oculus Rift is claustrophobia. Mm, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know a lot of people do uh, have problems with uh, things like that. People, but I mean, my wife, um, she had issues uh, with trying a, like a, a motorcycle helmet on um, when we went out one day. But uh, she hasn't really had an issue with the rift. I don't know if anyone else would s suffer in the same way. But uh, it's uh, I mean, it's not bad. It is. Um, it's kind of it's got the air gaps on the side and whatnot, so it's not like you're being stuck completely in. But it uh, it does get a bit uh, sweaty and a bit much after a while. So 
Alright, let's put everything back to normal. Everything where it was. So I did turn the brightness of the dashboard down because that's one thing I found uh, with the rift on. You know, like I've said before, it is kind of like being in a in a dark room. So anything which was you know bright on the monitor is incredibly bright with the rift on. Um, that's one of the things that uh, that Mike was laughing about um, last time he joined the stream was um, they haven't done anything in particular to change the amount of uh, bloom or uh, from the, from the suns or the jets from the ships but um I did mention that yeah it seemed uh, it seemed very bright I'm currently seeing like the top left quarter of the the screen okay okay yeah let's uh, let's just tweak that thanks alien that's uh, <laughs> see it's, it's great having you on just for that <laughs> <laughs> right. of course the um the thing is, I've uh, just changed to full screen mode, so the uh, the region has changed entirely. Okay, let's fit that in. There we go. So that should come up in a second or two. Um, hopefully, that's still capturing. Okay, so flicking through the keyboard only controls, I haven't really looked at this myself yet, but we've got pitch up and down on X and S. Ah, roll left and right on comma and period. This is sounding very uh, familiar. Uh, space to increase throttle, left shift to decrease throttle. Ah, uh, there we go. Excellent. Cool. So if that goes again, just give me a shout and I'll, <laughs> I'll adjust that as soon as. Uh, T to target, hostile, primary fire, the A key, excellent. Okay. That's, uh, that's funny actually, you look at this and there's, uh, there's virtually no keys assigned for the keyboard only mode. It's <laughs> compared to the myriad of inputs that you can select, virtually nothing is actually enabled. <laughs> Key dokey, so let's just get used to this. So we've got pitch up and down. The roll, yeah, left and right. Um, Karash? Yep. We're seeing a frozen screen. Oh, okay, okay. moving. Yeah. Hopefully that'll come back up in a second. Nope, I'm gonna have to switch it out. So yeah, so the problem is this um it's gone to full screen mode which it doesn't support. So let me uh, let me switch that out and that should help apply. That is the problem with switching around between Oculus and everything else is uh it's difficult to get that right first time. Ah uh, there we go, we've got cockpit now. Cool. Right here. So do what I normally do, where I, uh, I go to accelerate uh, out of Lave Station and uh, hit the fire key instead, and get to get the feds shouting at me. That's what I normally do. This is actually is not bad. Actually, they've got this mapped very well. There it is. Of course, at the moment, uh, I'm kind of just hitting stationary targets, so we'll soon find out in the next scenario if I'm if I can shoot for toffee with the keyboard. It's odd to have that head movement back in again, which obviously with the rift is. Uh, Completely oh, yes. disabled, yeah. And now we've got that uh, cockpit bobbing around a little bit again. There we go. First one done. Right. Which key was it for that? There we go. Let's try the next one. The other one's just saying he's assigned a key to just about everything you can do. <laughs> I, you must have a lot of spare keys on your keyboard. <laughs> no, he's saying he's filled all the keys up. <laughs> Remember that. That's the challenge. <laughs> Let's see if we I remember seeing 
probably a year or two ago now, it was a, a keyboard that was, uh, the keys were like touch sensitive. Oh, yeah. And they were, they all had little LCD screens on them. Oh, yes, the... Or oh. LED screens. Was it the... On the and, and you could, you could program in and the keys would change. Yeah, I, I really so like the Instead of a that. QWERTY layout, you could have an Elite Dangerous layout where that key's missiles, that key's accelerate, that key's change laser. <laughs> So. Yeah, I was I was a huge fan of that when I saw that first commit. I, I think it was, was it called the Optimus or something like that. I think it was. I can't remember what it was called. Yeah, I, I've got a feeling it was called something like that. It was. I love the look of it. But when I saw the price come out, I think it was like four or five hundred pound or something insane like that. I was like, yeah, not for a keyboard. Um, but no, it was excellent. I was thinking of all the possible options you could have for programming it, and all the various things you could do. And people went away and did things where they had the keys act like one giant screen, so you could have things like uh, it acted like a screensaver when you're away from your <laughs> from your desk. The, uh, oh, all the keys would like ripple with like a rainbow wave effect and things like that. Some really cool things that I saw people program. But, uh, see, it kind of fizzled out. See, now they, they could make a comeback with a Kickstarter. I would definitely... Yeah. Uh, I'd be up for that, but I'm broke. <laughs> I kind of can't, can't afford anymore. But that keyboard is just one of the few things I've seen for computers that I, I'm thinking to myself, why didn't that ever take off? <laughs> uh, another one I saw was a, a like a mouse controller, but it was uh, like a it looked like a volume control. Mm. Uh, Psycho Car had a volume controller Elite Meat. It's just yeah. like a round thing. Oh yeah, yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. But as well as turning, the thing swiveled mm. like a mouse. Oh, so right. you, you could use it as a mouse. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, this was years and years ago. Mm. It was a brilliant controller. No, I didn't, no, I haven't, I haven't and, seen that one before. And it's just like disappeared into nothing. Yeah, so the thing is, things find favour over others is kind of annoying, really. I mean, I think I, I assume what happened with that keyboard um, was likely to do with the, the advent of things like touch screens coming in, and people probably looked at it and thought, well, you know, why do we need something like this with individual keys? When it's like, oh, I can get a touch panel, so why do I need it? So, you know, perhaps that's what happened to that. But no, I must admit, I've never saw a keyboard like that. I mean, I've seen them with the additional controls and whatnot glued to the side, but that's a new one. I know you get a lot of gaming keyboards these days with little uh, LED screens in them and things like that with various bits and pieces on them that are effectively useless because, I mean, realistically, when it, you know, when it comes down to it, you don't spend a lot of time looking at your keyboard when you're playing a game, no. really. But, uh, yeah, each to their own. I know my cousin actually owns a very expensive keyboard with one of these uh, bit of everything uh, on it, but uh, I don't see the point myself. I've got a rel relatively basic keyboard. It, it does the trick. So yeah. It's only in these real Twitch games that it's it's worthwhile. So. so uh, I don't know if you read it in the chat for your stream a few nights ago, but uh, I put in a tip for your keyboard when you've got the Rift on and you can't see the keyboard, is to put a little bit of blue tack on a few of the keys. You like oh the yeah. important keys. Mm. And then as you're feeling the keyboard, you'll feel the keys, and you'll know which key is which. Mm. It's like for the 1, 2, and 3, if you put a bit of blue tack on either 1 and 3, or just 2 on its own, yeah. you'll know Where that it that's is. 1, 2, and 3. Yeah, absolutely. No, no, that's a good idea, definitely. No, I, I think um, I've got uh, the unfair advantage of spending all day at a keyboard for my job so uh, <laughs> I kind of uh, you've yeah. To touch type. <laughs> yeah pretty much not not entirely but uh, yeah I kind of just intuitively pick it up and, uh, and do it it's one of those annoying uh, jack of all trades type people whoa, 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 whoa. I crashed into the side window there oh dear yeah, I must admit, it is. It definitely seems a little bit more challenging to play it just with the keyboard. Um, it just seems like I don't have the fine control of the stick. But then I think that was the same sort of thing with the um, the Xbox controller. Actually, it didn't seem as as sensitive as what you can get with a f proper flight stick. But, uh, 
I suppose that is one of the things, really, is that, you know, when it comes to uh, trying to balance out the battles, you know, it's like, how do you how do you find that balance where you, you want to kind of keep it inclusive with everyone, with every kind of control method, so you, you can't really make the uh, battles insanely difficult just because people with the better control s schemes want them to be more difficult on those control schemes. It's that fine balance. I mean, I've seen it in a lot of games, particularly things like uh, iPad games, where you have, um, ah, what was that popular one? Temple Run. Temple Run's quite a popular one on the mobile oh platforms. Right. Yeah. And it's, um, you know, a lot of people say about, oh, it's really, really hard, it's really, really hard, and uh, a lot of the difficulty comes down to the control scheme. Um, because I think when it was ported to something like uh, Android or something like that, you could play it with uh, a keyboard on or, or something on a, uh, a Linux system or something like that. Um, suddenly all the difficulty had gone because you were doing it on a control method which was effectively much easier than uh, the touch screens. So uh, it, it's that difficult thing. It's like, uh, it's not just the, the gameplay you've got to balance, but it's, th it's the control systems. You've got to make them even in effect so that they work for everyone in every scenario. So yeah. Very difficult balancing act. I don't envy Frontier for having that job to do. There, there you are. I'm uh, <laughs> half tempted to arch my neck around a little bit to try and uh, see where he is, but that's not going <laughs> to work now. <laughs> Probably not a good idea to get used to, to uh, playing one way, i.e. Mm. always playing with the Oculus and always playing with your X-52. Yeah. It's probably a good idea to play in different manners, different ways. Oh, absolutely, yeah, and that's, what I, I, that's one of the things I wanted to do during the Alpha was to try it all out, if nothing else, to give feedback to Frontier, but um, yeah, I think it's definitely a good idea because, I mean, as, as great as the X-52 is, I find that you do tend to get a bit of cramp in the one arm because it's uh I think I mean that's a problem with all flight sticks really is that it needs to be embedded into my desk by about two or three inches. And I've got a, I've got a book here at the moment to rest my right hand on because it's so high. <laughs> but uh, yeah definitely flight uh, trying out all the different control schemes is uh is worth uh, worth anyone giving a go, see if they can get used to uh, different methods. Oops. Which I'm still not used to. Oh, excellent. I just realised the uh, secondary fire key was M, which would be missiles on Classic Elite. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Makes sense in this scenario. trying to reach up for the flight stick and realising that would be a stupid idea right now. <laughs> I do like these lock-on missiles, they're good. Got to keep them uh, in the target for a few seconds. So I really should find out how to... Uh, adjust my energy with uh, the keys because uh, that's quite an interesting um, tactic actually I, you know I, I knew they sp spoke about having this uh, energy balance on your systems before but uh, until I got hold of it and had a try I didn't realize how effective it was um, and to begin with I mean in the first couple of streams I wasn't even using it I was just kind of messing around really but once I got used to this idea of uh, you know balancing uh, your power between systems weapons and, and engines it's uh, it's surprisingly effective tactic actually. Sort of. I think it's I think it, that is something that those of us who are only watching it at the moment and haven't got the alpha, it's something 
we're going well yeah we can see how you're doing that but we won't actually learn that for ourselves mm. until we get in there and play it yeah definitely it is, that is the unfortunate thing that's why uh, you know i wish there was some better way i can demonstrate it to a lot of people but it's uh it's uh it's, well i mean if i if I, i'll stop for a second and i'll see if i can um pause in between each each case and explain what i'm doing a bit more because it's uh i'm kind of speeding through it and i i, I forget myself doing that actually so Let's see if we can find the option for it. I think gonna, just going to say goodbye, Commander Void. Oh, yes. Farewell, Commander. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Hopefully he'll, uh, he'll get that before, uh, <laughs> before the delay in the stream. Greg is saying, It is disheartening that you are playing better at Recon Wing with a keyboard than he is with a controller. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bye, Sharpshifter. Ah, uh, good evening. Thanks, thanks for joining in. So. Didn't even realise Sharpshifter was watching. No, sorry, no, Sharpshifter. So, there's so much going on. Definitely. Right. I think what I got to do is I'll switch back to the um, to the flight six so we can have a look at this. Um, oh, there we go. I've lost. I really should save my. Uh, Oh, I don't know if we can save settings actually yet. That's one of the things I haven't played with, whether we can save uh, mapping. Resets. Mm, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm completely blind right now. I've gone up and down several times and I really cannot see it. Oh, and Commander Oddball saying good good night as well. Ah, uh, farewell, Commander. Thank you for popping in. Hopefully, I'll, uh, I'll do a few more in uh, streams in the week and you can uh, join in with us then. Try as I might, I have scrolled up and down here. There we go. My word. Absolutely blind. Should know where this is now. I've done it a few times. So. And Flight yet assist. another one's leaving us. Good night. Come ah, on, there we go. See, midnight and everyone's off. There we go. It is ridiculously yeah. late though. I will just quickly go over this um, energy usage thing on there. So. Uh, yeah, you can see um, in the bottom right we've got these little pips. So on the X52, I've got my uh, my right hand thumb is uh, is controlling that. I can knock it left and right and up and down. So down goes to the RST at the bottom, which is quite simply reset. And then uh, what I can do is I can I can balance out to uh, to the top there. I can put four little energy pips into the top. See, so they lights up brighter, and that lets me have more. Uh, Maneuverability and uh, overall maximum speed. <laughs> and things like that. Now I've demonstrated that, which was, you know, entirely on purpose. That was exactly what I was trying to do. Um, I can put more power into systems um, to get my shields back up. Um, you'll see in a second what I've done there, Alien. Uh, <laughs> it's the way to do it. Uh, but yeah, so you can. I can just tap over to the left. You put more, more energy into systems there, and it. Uh, I don't think it speeds up the recharge time, but I think it uh, means that your shields take more of a beating. That's that's how it feels when I've been playing before. Actually, if you, uh, if you feel like you're losing a fight, you can put more of your energy directly into shields. And rather like I think in the, in the original Elite, you could uh, you could have shields uh, reverse in front and everything like that, so you could kind of choose to face someone head on or uh, flee and uh, you'd have different energies for front and rear. Instead of that we've got uh, just the one power setting for shields um, so we can kind of say like you know we're making a run for it we put all our energy into shields. Um, this guy isn't attacking me yet so I'm going to start shooting at him just for a while. And different weapons seem to react differently to the amount of weapon power as well so if I uh, See on the back of these guns, they do have these uh, little heat veins that um, warm up and start to glow gradually. But we don't have a heat problem on these guns. Uh, we've just got this reload time. So if we put more energy into weapons, I think, at least I hope, when we get down to uh, reload, we should. Uh 
yeah, the reload is, is just a fraction quicker. Now it's more apparent in um, one of the other scenarios where you've got a uh, a weapon with uh, heat build up on it. Um, I think this one. I think we have pulse lasers in this one. Uh, any weapon with heat buildup, if you put more of your uh, system energy into weapons, it reduces the cooldown time. So I assume uh, more of the more of the energy is being dumped out of your uh, your ship's uh, radiative uh, heat fins on the back there. So they take longer to actually. Uh, get to heat shut down, there you go, thermal overload, and they do actually cool down quicker, you can see on the right there on both of the thermal lasers, because I've got all of my energy into weapons, but the downside of that, obviously I've put all of my energy into weapons, my shields have failed a lot more uh, rapidly, so when he comes back round, I'll uh, put all of my energy into shields, see it's still recharging at the same rate basically, but... Um, yeah. That's if I don't get destroyed in the process. Come on. A couple more pips on my shields. There we go, my shield's back up. Okay, so I've still got three red rings at the moment. I don't know how long it's going to take for them to build back up in terms of energy, but uh, they, t they took a few blasts there after... Uh, and they've gone down again there. So yeah, so definitely you've got that kind of balance there where you've uh, you've got a lot more control over your your ship systems, which is uh, which is interesting. It's definitely like you said, it is something that you really have to kind of play with and get a feel for, and it's hard to explain really. So. Are you still using keyboard, or have you gone back to joystick? For, for that demo there, I just went back to the joystick because uh, I couldn't. Couldn't find the <laughs> couldn't find the keyboard option to actually change the pips on the power balance there. I don't think there's a default option built in for it. Um, let's see if we can find it on uh, keyboard. So be system system balance on here. Miscellaneous. Oh, there we go, yeah, so we could just use the up arrows and all. I didn't even see that up, down, left, right arrows is the same as using the uh, the control uh, stick on the right. Okay, so I think if there's no more questions coming in, I think we'll, uh, we'll call it a day, as it's exactly midnight. Um, as always. Yeah, they're uh, kind of talking amongst themselves. <laughs> talking well, about left-handed joysticks and why there aren't any at the minute. <laughs> yeah, it is one of these unfortunate things, isn't it? It's, uh, it's, it's such a kind of distinctive shape to a joystick. <laughs> it's uh, not something you can uh, easily switch hand with. I know a lot of people say, oh, just switch hand. It's, it's definitely not that easy. So there we go. So there we go. So I'll, um, I will uh, just call it a day there and uh, just uh, give a big thank you for everyone for tuning in tonight and uh, definitely a, a bigger thank you to Alien for helping out this evening. Appreciate You're welcome. It. Thank you for streaming for yeah, us. That's no problem at all. Yeah, and uh, definitely we'll try and do this uh, try and do this again. I think it's it's a it's a more interesting format having someone for me to chat along with. So uh, yep. we'll, uh, It doesn't have to be me. It can be anyone you are in your contacts on Skype. Yeah, definitely anyone. So, uh, yep, comments and suggestions are welcome. Anyone uh, wants to put forward their name or something to have a chat with me and uh, we'll uh, try and set it up for the next stream so thank you very much for watching